Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we've got Tour de France Oakley's new bikes, lightweight tyres, Pogacar's hair tuft and why the pros are wearing massive helmets. <laughs> We're also going to be discussing why you got beaten by a 12 year old in a bike race. Didn't get beaten by a 12 year old. You're just saying that because you always get beaten by children these days. Whatever, we'll sort this out in a minute. So this week for our main talking point, we are discussing why it is time trial helmets seem to have gotten so massive, clearly which Ollie is demonstrating, and also if um, Tade Pogacar's tuft of hair is actually slowing him down. Yeah, we decided to go to the wind tunnel with the help of our unofficial GCN Tech wind tunnel consultant, the bike tailor, in a bid to find out. And with the uh, big French bike ride starting this week, we thought it would be a good idea to try and investigate if one of the main contenders, Tade Pogacar, was actually at a disadvantage with his, with his hair escaping his bike yeah, Is helmet. it destroying the aerodynamics of his helmet? Well, well the thing is, right... The results, hopefully. Well, it's, I mean, it's almost like his trademark, isn't it? I think it is actually his trademark now. Oh, he does that. Yeah, actually, he, he has his little. He do, yeah, he has a logo, the Poggy logo. Yeah. With a little tuft sticking out. I loaded up the Met website earlier. Um, you go to select road bike helmets. There's a silhouette of Pagacha with a tuft of hair poking out. It's just his thing. And Connor's thing, weirdly. <laughs> weirdly, you say that. Um, we're obviously using Met helmets. The. What is it? The Trenta. Uh, my hair pokes out a little bit, and I haven't even got long hair. Yeah, that's, the, that's where the similarities between Pogacar and I end. Okay, right, what, what was the result of the tuft in the wind tunnel? Less than half a watt at 45 kilometres an hour. That's like nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, it's, it's within the realms of experimental error. It should be considered negligible. It doesn't make a difference. So it's not slowing him down, it's not speeding him up. But Hair tough, no. is there anything he could do to try and speed up? Well, I think if he was taking the Tour de France seriously. <laughs> I think he is. I don't think he is, because okay. if he were taking it seriously, he would have watched our video mm -hmm. where we shaved our arms and simulated a shaved head, because if you cast your mind back to that, we saw that shaving your arms and having a slick head under your helmet saved five watts at 45 kilometres an hour, which is significant to someone like him. I'm st I mean, I, I, I don't not believe you. And him, I not only that, move. cooling benefit. Yeah. I cooling just, benefit. That bit I get. At, Weight saving, probably about 100 grams of hair. More for you, look at that head of hair, you'd save a load of weight. I know, yeah, it'd be so much lighter. All right then, what's this um, chat about you getting beaten by a 12 year old then, or a child? He wasn't 12, he was 16. <laughs> Still a child. No he's not, and he's not, he's not an ordinary 16 year old, he's taller than me, yeah. and he's the younger brother of Josh Tarling, who rides for Ineos Grenadiers and just won the British National Time Trial yeah. Championships. Um, Name's Finley Tarling. So he's like a man child. Yeah, but he's one, he's very talented. He's one to keep, remember the name, Finley Tarling. He's going places. Um, well, even though he did beat you, how did you go on this time trial? Well, job? I did pretty well. You've had a bit of a goal you've been trying to achieve. Yeah, so I've you? been trying to do um, 18 minutes something for 10 miles for years. I've finally achieved it. Fair play. Average 52 kilometres an hour. I was going to say, it's absolutely rapid. For people that don't realise the speed you are going yeah. for that, it's unbelievable. I know, especially for me. Uh, so 18 minutes, uh, 40 seconds I managed to do it in. And then I, I got beaten by like 20 seconds by four. Now you've time. been actually pretty close to achieving this for a little while now, because I've been keeping a tab on your progress. Mm. But um, there's one little piece of equipment that was maybe, potentially be considered as the last piece of the puzzle for you. Well... Yes, so if you'd like to see a, a sort of detailed video on, on how I managed to ride an 18 minute, 10 mile time trial. I actually would like to see that. Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Um, and if there's enough demand, we'll, we'll make it happen. But yeah, one thing that it brings it on to that was definitely a piece of the puzzle that helped yeah. was using a massive helmet. <laughs> I can't take you seriously when you say that. Yeah, so when we went to the wind tunnel, yeah. one of the things I wanted to know was how the, the, the Met TT helmet performed and which of the Met TT helmets was, you know, faster for me. Yeah, so they're really system dependent, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So, so what's good for so you one thing, yeah. be so people. We're now sponsored by Met, but, you know, w the fastest TT helmet for you might be a different brand. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's very system dependent. Fortunately, the, the Met drone was faster on me than our previous sponsor. 
which is very good news. Yeah, that's good news. It is. And but then the bike tailor was like, "Why don't, why don't we try try a size large? Because yeah. I normally wear a medium." Yeah. So it's a bit counterintuitive. This think like bigger helmet, bigger frontal area. That's going to be slower. That's really counterintuitive. A medium fits me. Yeah. Why would I wear a large? Put the large on. Seven watts faster seven. at forty-five kilometers an hour. So at, at 52 kilometres an hour yeah. that I average for this TT, that's going to be significantly more of a saving than that. What have we you, got you're in basically terms of speed? you're looking you're looking in the realm of like, you know, five seven seconds. Which I mean, when you've been trying to get that real specific time, that that could have been the difference of making it or not. Well, previously I did 1902. <laughs> So <laughs> you must have been heartbreak that day. Three seconds. <laughs> we did yeah. have the fancy helmet, didn't you? Yeah, but it, but it's but it's it's crazy. It's counterintuitive that the bigger helmet and so is is faster. Yeah, and so it suggests that that's the reason why we've seen like. Well, if you look at Juan Ayuso, won a yeah. couple of time trials recently with the, the size large max, looks massive on him. And, and the Ineos riders um, with their cask TT yeah. helmets, they're all riding massive ones now. You look at Teo and you look at uh, Ghana and you look at Thomas in the Giro. Big it's helmets. a trend which we are starting to see in pro racing. I'm not really sure I like that trend because it does look like you're ready to go onto a spaceship or something. If it makes you faster, <laughs> I'm all for it. I'm all for like, it as well. I think, so the, the theory is... That, that what you're what you're sort of doing is you're min better manipulating the airflow right at the front of the rider, yeah. and therefore guiding it better over the the shoulders and the back of the rider by having this helmet, which just encourages the airflow to be more laminar o over a greater surface area, and then just sort of yeah helps it better flow around the shoulders. And now, stuff. it makes a lot of sense because, like you say, you've got the whole body to try and push through the air, not just the first bit of your well, head. You're basically wearing a massive fairing. Uh, this isn't a new thing, though. No. Because if you cast your mind back to when we did our beginner amateur pro TT thing with Freddie and uh, Rich Bussell, who's a former national time trial champion, he uh, he was wearing a size large Met drone, which looks disproportionately big in the video. He's a small guy as well. Yeah, but he, he'd done a lot of aero testing and he... he uh, he, he knew, he knew back then, but he kept it secret, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> All right, um, large helmets for everybody, and yeah, once again, thanks to Bike Taylor for helping us sort out this wind tunnel stuff. So if you're after a custom bike, here's your man. Yeah. It's now time for hot and spicy tech. Ollie, what are we kicking things off with this week? Oakley have got some special edition Tour de France limited edition uh, mm. shades. Yeah. So it's cool, Oakley often do like special editions for things like the Olympics and the Tour. They haven't disappointed this year. They've got four uh, different glasses available in this Tour de France honouring splatter design. <laughs> so it's like yellow for the big French bike ride yeah. with black splatters on the top. And they also have the little Tour de France logo on the little fire iridium lens yeah. on these ones. So these are the Sutro Light Sweeps. Correct. Which I like these. What so, do you think? Um, let me have a quick look here. You look good. You look like you're ready for the big French bike race. I've seen Wout van Aert wearing these, so I'm basically like Wout van Aert. Yeah, um, pretty much the same. This design, though, I like it because it reminds me of the factory pilots that Greg LeMond used to wear. It's kind of like a modern version of yeah. the factory pilots. I, I like the fact it's got a slight retro vibe to it. Yeah, well, mm. if you don't like these ones, they are also doing um, the classic radar EV. Yeah. Can't go wrong with those. There's the Encoder Strike and the Silas, which is more of like a casual bike. I say, I don't know the Silas. Yeah. yeah, it's like a um, Ray-Ban Wayfarer. Okay. Um, um, next up, we have some saddle technology to go through. We've got some high-tech saddles and then a slightly less high-tech saddle. So first up, um, Cell Italia have their 3D printed saddles and they've expanded that range now. I think you took a closer look at them at Eurobike. Yep, so we've got a video coming out this weekend with even more Eurobike hot tech. There was just so much stuff there, I, I just had to get another video done because there was oh. so much to show you. Well, there you go. If you want to see even more stuff, check it out this weekend. But I'll tell you briefly, so the 3D printed technology is all made in a top cover to make it so they can literally infinitely control how the pressure points of the saddle work. And they've moved that technology across to the Novus Boost Evo and I think it's the Watt saddle, mm. more sort of like triathlon inspired one. Well, no, that's the saddle that I've got on the TT bike Oh, that I did my race on the other week. Well, there you go. Mm. Maybe that helped you Not out. Not the 3D printed one, though, just the normal one. Oh. 
3D printed one, you'd be even yeah, faster. Pretty cool. um, in terms of slightly less cutting edge technology, Brooks have released a special edition saddle. It's called the C17. And this is a special edition version for the four day migration gravel race, which goes across the Masai Mara in Kenya. Um, it comes with sort of traditional brown color, but it comes with a fancy, um, I can't think of the word now, a fancy musette type oh. bag. Yeah. Traditional brown. Yeah, but it's like traditional, like subtle, I missed that like, one in the in the Pantone colour sheet. Traditional, traditional brown. Traditional brown. Yeah, but you go. Okay, it's just standard leather colour from yesteryear. Does <laughs> so that go next to hearing aid brown? <laughs> yeah, it's actually very quite close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant! Right. All right. Well, there was other, there was a load of other new stuff at Eurobike. Um, so check out that video the weekend. There's some cool stuff in it. Like the I got a look at the Lion bikes. Which oh. is Marcel Kittel and Tony Martin's collaboration on like children's bikes. Oh, so that's I heard pretty about cool. This. Yeah, they're meant to be super safe. So that's in there. Um, but there was also a couple of new bikes teased yeah. at Eurobike. So firstly, there's a new factor that's going to come out at the Tour de France. So keep your eyes peeled for that. What they did was, um, I mean, we can show you footage now. They just had a box of the bike with a wheel sticking out of either end. What? And the, the actual new what? bike was in there. I was like trying to peek inside and have a look, but no, you can. Oh, see. you can see it wasn't clear box. It was just an actual box. It was a cardboard box, yeah. And I, a, so the new factor coming out. That's all we know. That's all they would say. It was just I'm like going to throw it out there right now. There was not a bike in there. No, there, there was. There, there was, was. Just wheels each end. No, there was. There was actually a bike oh, in okay. there, but like it was the gap between the wheel and the, and the cardboard was really tight. Uh, was uh, there a new felt as well? Yeah. So I actually missed this well because I mean there was so much at the show, um, but. Um, I've seen other people reporting on it. So it had like a sort of dazzle camouflage like from World War One battleships on yeah. it to sort of disguise it a bit, even though it was right there and you could look at it. Um, but it's <laughs> presumably a new felt AR, which is their kind of lightweight race bike. It's, um, but there's, yeah, there's no, no other details on it really. Well, if we know there's the details, people. we'll gradually tell you all about it. But do you know the easiest way to see, see the bikes? It's just to watch every single second of the Tour de France coverage, which is available on GCN Plus. That way, you Seamless. can see it yourself. Seamless. <laughs> um, we have some new lightweight tyres next. Mm. Now, these are from Schwalbe, something which I saw. Schwalbe. Schwalbe. You've spent too much time away from uh, the UK, haven't you? In Deutschland. Yeah. Um, anyway, so these are super light tubeless tyre. I haven't got loads of details about them, but I do have some information on the claimed weight because they're pretty light boys. 165 grams is the claimed weight for the 28 millimeter and version. that's tubeless. Tubeless. I mean, you're you're going to have to add some sealant in, but you're going to have to do it with other tires, which um, is some pretty impressive claims. And you're looking at like in the region of 100 grams lighter than even your average like high performance tire. And I think it might be the lightest tubeless tire ever. So um, yeah, you'd assume these are going to be like proper race a day only tyres like mm. for silky smooth roads. But um, as we get some more details about them, we'll, we'll tell you about them a bit yeah. more. Mm. Uh, something else I missed at Eurobike. That's a lot of stuff you missed. I was running around. Like. I, I walked like 20k every day. There was a lot to see. So there was a lot there. Really 20k? Yeah. Oh, I had okay. a tracker on. Uh, driven e-bike system. Yeah, this is actually really cool. So do you remember... I mean, obviously you do remember, a while back, the ceramic driven shaft. Yeah, the ceramic system. speed. Yeah. yeah, so basically the the sector, the area where they started developing this, they've sort of broken away from ceramic speed. They've built up some funding and it's now just driven as its own entity. So they had a completely sealed e-bike drive unit where it's got like a, a bevel and planetary gear system at the crank combined in with a motor, sealed away from the elements, and then you've got the shaft drive to the back wheel. So what they've done is gone, hey, like this kind of technology, we think we can make it work, but we want to move away from the racing element because it's obviously a very niche market. So they've branched into the e-bike cool, sector. Yeah, which I think is good. Like as I say, sealed system, and the, some of the numbers that I've seen floating around are, you can have it a 10,000, I can't remember if it's kilometers or miles, service interval between this, and we just have to change the oil, which is kind of pretty impressive. That is good, Yeah, but... It's, it's that whole thing, isn't it, where de consumers would like that. Consumers would like that. But then we get into the realms of conspiracy theories. <laughs> it's don't... like, the, the, you know, someone will buy the patent for this yeah. and then never let it see the light of day ever again. Because what <sighs> good is it if I sell you something that never wears out? That is actually very true. Mm. Well, if you look at it that way, it is. Yeah. Anyway... Um... With my conspiracy <laughs> theory hat on. 
for about four and a half kilogram system weight for the whole thing. Um, so yeah, it, it does lend itself towards that sort of e-bike commuter casual. I reckon riding you can make market. it lighter though, because you could have a, I mean, a, a carbon fiber a crankshaft. The drive shaft could be yeah. carbon. Like, there's there's ways of making it. The, mm. what, I think they could make it way lighter, way more efficient, fancy, whatever. But I think they've just decided that e-bike market is for them. Yeah, cool. cool. Um, that's it for Hot Tech this week. Move on to comments of the week. Neither of us are prepared to wrap. We're just going to go straight into it, shall we? Yeah. Mm. Uh, so first question, uh, first question, <laughs> first comment from last week's show, right, is uh, Tertiary Eel 2066, who says, week 15 of asking for the UCI has no jurisdiction here t-shirt. Keep on asking. Yeah, he asks every week. Yeah, what, um, what number do you think we should get to until we maybe consider doing this? Should we wait, hang it out till Christmas, and then see if we can get this Keep together? asking, keep asking. Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> Silver, Silver Eugene? What? Silver Hugo. 7118. Um, says, hey guys, love the show. My question is, is there a particular reason why you sometimes don't show some bikes from the bike bar? I posted mine three weeks ago, haven't seen it on the show. Well, would you believe it? We get a lot of submissions in the bike bar. Yeah. And far more than we can actually keep up with. Mm. And I do like, now and again, when I've got a bit of spare time, I sit there and go through the bike. It can be hard to find them. Yeah, it is hard to pick them out. I do my best every week, but yes. what, what can a guy do? Um, some comments under our, well, it was the second Eurobike yeah. video. Uh, Norbert's 482 says, the DMT shoes, these are the, the Pogaccia special edition What's the little... Heartbeat got a heart symbol. rate on them, yeah. yeah. Showing all the victories as heart rate for me would be nothing. It would just show a flat <laughs> line of death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. I, I'm intrigued by the fact they've got a white sole. Like it's painted white. Yeah, but it look, it creates a very cool look. Like it makes it, it look, look like good. a, like, like I said, like a trainer. I like it. I like it too. Cool. Um, David Pomerantz says, I'm disappointed that Ollie didn't travel around um, on the Amazon's Eurobike. At Eurobike. At Eurobike. I was disappointed that the Eurobike wasn't at Eurobike. I would have assumed it would have been like they there at the entrance. Massive stand, yeah. front and centre. A whole hole. 50 Eurobikes just like, hanging from the ceiling, just like. Uh, you know what? That's not possible. Why? The ceiling's not structurally strong enough. Yeah. <laughs> 50 euro bikes. Yeah. You need some special engineering for that. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, underneath my solid tyres video from the weekend, Norm's Kilite says. I, I think it's Norm Skylight. I think you might be right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> says I switched to solid tyres for commuting as I was always getting punctures. They're heavy and less forgiving and so slow and more hard work. But then I switched back to pneumatics at the weekend and it's been um, like I've been training in extra gravity. The same hills suddenly feel so easy. <laughs> Honestly, you've got to experience these solid tyres. It's like riding They're through... so slow. It is like riding through custard. Worse. Any other non-Newtonian fluid. Mmm, of which I don't know any. <laughs> <laughs> What's the other comment we got? Jane Flakes says, that was fun. I've never tried solid bicycle tyres, and to be honest, I'm unlikely to ever want to. <laughs> but this confirms that choice for me. Thanks for taking the hit for the rest of us, Alex. The only time I'm ever likely to try solid rubber is if I can afford to buy that Chieftain tank I've always wanted. Jane wants a Chieftain tank. Well, I'm glad I'm just out there providing information to the masses that people really want to know. Mm. Mm. Why does she want a Chieftain tank, though? I don't know, I'm not sure what Why set the bar low? Why not be like, you know, Challenger 2, Abrams. Aim high, sky's yeah. the limit. Um, it's now time for the bike vault, our favorite part of the show, the bell. Oh, here's the bell. It's primed and ready to go. This is the part where you upload pictures of your bikes into the bike vault on the GCN app. Everyone at home can judge them to be nice or super nice, but we have the casting vote. Um, so first up is the most super nice from last week, from as voted by you in the app. Gambert Rodolph uh, uploaded this resplendent Colnago V4 RS. I think it's a three, it says oh, it. V3 RS. <laughs> um, with the UAE Team Emirates logo on it, gold as well. On Raval the wheels. What do we make yeah, of that well, on a Colnago? A, I'm... I'm I'm Down fine with that, yeah. But oh, it's I'm unusual, isn't it? You don't normally it's see that. It's an unusual combo. Uh, I really like the Vittoria tyres on it. They really look smart on it. Oh, 
tan walls do it for me. That's just, that is a super nice, easy. It's like, I'm upset about the wall, but yeah, it's a super nice. Next up, we've got... Um, Good luck on this username. MPP KRB 9 WF 7. <laughs> He's a droid. With a Trek Damali SLR 6 from 2016. Nice, wonky angle. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean. Why is that a bit of cloth or is an old t-shirt hanging off the tree? No, it's just. Yeah, it's What is nice. that? It's like, yeah, it's like a, it's like someone's died. It looks like it's covered in blood. <laughs> it does look bad, doesn't it? Someone's been murdered there or something. <laughs> Oh, Thank okay. God. Right. Um, next up is Gareth JB0915 with a Pinarello X3. Well, that's one of the latest bikes from Ooh. Pinarello. I'm going to go uh, super nice on that one. Very well presented. Very it yeah, is. easy. Made life easy. I'll tell you what, though, interesting choice. Something about Flat it's pedals. not doing it for me. Flat pedals. Yeah. Nah, it's a super nice. Though. I mean, Come it on. is. I just, there's something about it. It's are you saying, we have to agree, so if you're saying that's not a super nice, then it's not a super nice. For some reason, that bike is not doing it for me. Wow. I don't know what it is. Wow. It's, it's a nice wow. bike. Wow. It's like, nah, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. It's, I think this is going to be another nice. chain set moment, Alex. I think the comments <laughs> are going to go wild. Do you know what Connor said to me this morning? What? We were upstairs in the office, he said, oh, I love that people keep bringing up the chain set yeah. in all videos. Yeah. <laughs> You've just done it now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Whatever. Wow. Carly 75 said uh, with a stalk. Fascinero 3. Fascinero. It's because it's fascinating and aero. <laughs> Weird. It's a concept I can get behind. Weird angle. Yeah. Jaunty angle. Second no. bottle's half fallen out of the no. cage. No. no. no non drive side, no. Oh, this is actually, next up is my mate Toby. Yeah, I know Toby. Oh, you do, you do actually. I yeah, forgot. I've, yeah, I've, yeah I've, I've ridden with Toby. I was present when he took this picture. I didn't so, get many tips on it either, so this is all his own Did he ride with you at the weekend? Yeah, he did. Yeah, Saturday. Long ride. Rode almost 50 miles to the coast to see how good the seaside was. It was misty. Hang on a minute. You've put this in the bike vault. Yeah, I put it in And for there's him. that lad up. That we, it's going to be another chain set moment, Alex. <laughs> that guy has gone, I try to get in the bike vault every week and never get in. And then your mate, Toby, our mate Toby, our mate, Toby. has got spe special treatment because of you. Yeah. Oh, God. All you've got to do is come right. out on a bike ride and Just in, slide right. in with the DMs, yeah. The tidal wave of comments is coming. What are we saying on that, then? <laughs> Super nice. <laughs> Super nice. Have you, has, he no paid, question about it. has he paid you? Yeah, he said he'd get me lunch. For God's sake. No, he didn't actually say that. But it, I think it's super nice. I'm, I'm no comment. Right, <laughs> GG Rides Bikes has got a Canyon Ultimate next. Is this one of your mates as well? <laughs> no. No? Do you sell them that chain set that's on that bike? <laughs> yeah, a full price though. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, they're the limited edition Vittoria Giro tyres that are pink. That's they pretty are. smart. I can see that. Like that. <laughs> um, I, that's oh. a super nice for me, that one. I really like it. Oh, that's my favourite Jura Ace chain set as well, actually. I one. love that group set edition. Yeah. Yeah. That's super my favourite nice. one. Oh. Uh. David Bloor next with a Triban 120 disc. The bike of the people. The I'm going around. super nice on that. He's presented yeah. it well. The tyres are lined up. I like his big uh, Pirelli um, tyres on there. Big chunky boys. Yeah, I'm digging it. Yeah, right. Super nice. We're running out of time. Right. put extra in the bike vault. <laughs> Ollie's fed up with the tech show now. God's sake. Um, I've had an absolute blast being here. It was good fun. Glad we haven't fallen out over the chain set or Toby's bike. Um, yeah. Same next week, is it? Yeah. Also, let us know in the comments section down below if you're going to get a ginormous TT helmet. Mm. Right. Now later. you know that Pogaccio is, uh, well, he's aerodynamic. <laughs> that is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Have you went all show to say that? Yeah. Yeah. What a loser. <laughs> <laughs>